My name is Mike Radinsky. I'm the Living History Coordinator for Howard County Recreation and Parks, uh, b &O Railroad Station, Ellicott City Museum. And uh, today I'm dressed as a Union soldier to talk about the wine and steam gun here in Howard County. This is a replica that was built in uh, the 1960s by two uh, local residents. It was built for a reenactment that was to be held in Ellicott City in 1961. Well, the wine and steam gun is somewhat of a, a misnomer. It was engineered or developed by a man named Charles S. Dickinson from Ohio in the 1850s. Uh, in the 1840s and 1850s, steam technology was in its infancy, and everybody was trying to develop uh, steam engines for railroads and uh, rivers and, of course, for weaponry. Charles Dickinson improved a gun that was uh, designed by William Jocelyn of Ohio, and he created the gun that we see a representation of behind us. This gives a good representation of how the steam gun was moved. Uh, they would actually use mules or horses to pull it in place so it wasn't self-propelled. Now this representation is a little shortened from what the original gun in diagrams would have looked like. The boiler and smokestack would have been further back and there would have been a space between the boiler and smokestack for an operator to stand. The boiler and smokestack and the engine which would be about a four horsepower steam engine would be all included in this piece, then would be connected by gears to the, the barrel. And this tub was actually designed to protect the operator while he stood behind it. The barrel would be an L-shaped gun barrel, basically. It had a pivot and gears underneath of it, and it would rotate or spin at a very high rate, about 1600 RPM of inside of this drum. The shot or balls would be dropped by an operator down into the machine. The balls would then go toward the outside of the tub, and as it spun, what they call centrifugal force, but today we know it as centripetal force, would force the balls to the outside, and then once they're released, and those forces cease to uh, push on that ball, the ball would then fly in a straight line toward whatever the target was. The uh, rate that he claimed it could, have, it could reach at 1600 RPM would be three to 400 shots coming out of this thing a minute. Uh, and that was in a day where an average soldier could fire three shots per minute. At the time, uh, this was considered a terrifying killing machine. The gun was doomed from the start. Its rate of fire is high. However, a rifled musket would fire effectively three to 400 yards, where this gun was only effective to about 80 to 100 yards. And because it uses centrifugal or centripetal force, uh, it doesn't have the same velocity as a bullet coming out of a rifled musket. So it doesn't have the killing force at 100 or 200 uh, feet that a rifled musket would have. Also, if you look at the, the gun, it's cumbersome. It has to be pulled by a team of horses on a battlefield. It requires fuel to fire uh, the boiler and, of course, water, uh, which are hard to find on a battlefield during a battle. Artillery pieces that were used during the war would be able to zero in on this thing from half a mile to a mile away, and it would be a sitting duck on a battlefield. Essentially, it was built for the highest bidder. Uh, the inventor was a northerner, Dickinson. He exhibited models of it in Ohio, a full-size model in Boston. He was then asked by the Baltimore City Council to bring the gun down to Baltimore in February of 1861 to provide them with a demonstration of its capabilities. On April 19, 1861, federal troops were traveling through Baltimore in an attempt to get to Washington, D.C. to defend Washington. As they were traveling through Baltimore, a riot broke out and Southern sympathizers attacked the troops that were marching through Baltimore Eventually, the troops fired back into the crowd. At the end of the day, there were 16 people killed, four soldiers and 12 civilians. After that, Baltimore City attempted to provide defense for its citizens against another federal invasion, as they called it. And the Baltimore City Police Department started to stockpile weapons and ammunition. The gun was taken by the Baltimore Board of Police Commissioners and stored at Ross Winans' car house in Baltimore. Uh, the inventor, Charles Dickinson, then retrieved the gun and hired Teamsters to take the gun from Baltimore to Harper's Ferry, where he then hoped to take it to Richmond to sell it to the Confederates. The two Teamsters got about nine and a half miles outside of Baltimore, which would place them approximately uh, here at the intersection of Main Street and the Robert Oliver Viaduct. But when they reached this point, they were met by Robert Hare, who was a local citizen attached to General Butler's staff in Relay, Maryland. Uh, he rode up to the Teamsters, pulled a revolver, he put the gun to the head of one of the Teamsters and said, you are all now prisoners of the United States, including this gun. Uh, after the gun was secured by the troops here, uh, they took the gun to Relay. It was then taken to Annapolis, where it was exhibited. From Annapolis, it then went to New York, 
New York then went to Boston, where it was exhibited in uh, several agricultural fairs. Uh, it was then given to the Middlesex Mechanics Association as a trophy of war. Uh, they displayed it basically on their front lawn for a while until it was then uh, disassembled and sold as scrap. The gun was misnamed uh, by the papers of the day. It was called the Winans Steam Gun. Uh, Ross Winans, the industrialist, was a Southern supporter. He was a states' rights advocate. However, he probably knew nothing about this gun because the Baltimore City Police Department had simply placed the gun in one of his repair shops uh, after the riot of 18, April 19, 1861. But the local newspapers had it in for Ross Winans as he was a Southern sympathizer. And the pro-Union newspapers used the name Winans attached to this weapon of death in order to smear his name.